uh, welcome back to another action packed exciting video on Sip P. Now in front of you you see a little small test diagram uh, that has two Sip P devices and a Genban QFlex ESPC. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to put this uh, Genban SPC underneath a little load and by putting a little load on this SPC you can um, do some feature testing while there's a load on the device. So how do we do that? So that's very simple. One, we have two devices. I have a server running SIPP as a client and I have another server running SIPP as a server or the termination device. Um, the origination IP address will be dot three. The termination IP address, and this diagram is wrong, is actually dot forty. Um, and then dot fifty will send the call to termination SIPP device dot one. Now, the files that I use, I basically just got off of the SIPP uh, website. I didn't change them at all. Do any modifications? Well, I did one modification. I increased the delay from eight milliseconds to um, eighteen milliseconds to allow a little more um, media traffic to go by. So, with that, let's go to that website, and here are the files that I just downloaded. Now, if you install SIPP, I forget if they don't come with it or not. If not, you can just go to Yuri here and download them yourself and put them in the directory where you need them. Uh, here, this one here is a UAC underscore PCAT XML. This is going to be on the client SIPP.3. And then the other file that I downloaded and put in the SIPP is the UAS.XML. It's the server. So this is going to terminate or answer the invite coming from this particular configuration. And that resides on dot one. Alright. Now, as you can see here, this is on my client side. This is the command that I'm going to be using on the client side. And also you can see the command that I'm going to be using on the, on the termination side. So let me just quickly go through some of these switches here. And you can read them yourself. So SF, dash SF, all the way down here. This basically says use this file instead of the standard file. As you can see from here, load an alternate XML scenario file, which I am. If you get right here. Uh, the next switch here is dash i, that's basically the local IP address of the SIP client, in this case here, is dot three, and let's go see what that switch definition is, and it basically sets the local IP address of contact via from headers, blah, blah, blah. I right, get the point. Now here, this is where I'm going to send the call to, to dot 40. So dot three will send an invite to dot 40. And from the diagram here, this is one side of the QFlex SPC. Now the next thing here is switch is the da da dash S, which we go down here, and we can see it stands for set the user part as a request here, 3209. The next one here is a dash R, which is a rate. In this case here, it's going to be one call per second. You can see here. Right there, and then basically I'm going to delay it two seconds. So basically, this is going to be a half a call a second. And the dot trace, let's see if we're down here, should be in alphabetical order. Dot trace underscore E R R R R is just going to create a default error file. So let's say if I um, slam the SPC with a thousand calls per second, um, obviously the SPC, in this case, this SPC will return. Uh, 503 gateway un unavailable and then SIPP will start to log those errors in this file. So let's get to it. Let's close this sucker down. Once again let's look at the diagram. SIPP client is going to call, in this case here we call the private side of the QFlex SPC, the QFlex SPC then has a route that goes to this SIP device using the dot .50 to send to dot .1. Very simple call flow. This is great. All you have to do is bump it up two, three calls per second. You've got a nice little load running on your system, and then you can do all your feature testing and see how a system works with a slight load. Remember now, this SPC is just a um, enterprise SPC, so it's not one of those big core. SPCs are going to handle hundreds and hundreds of uh, calls per second. So let's get started here. So the first step here is I'm going to hit enter. 
on the server side first. Now we have some, nothing's happening. Now I can hit enter here. And now I put in my root password. So I'm running it as root. It's always good if you can put it in right the first time. Now there we go. Let's see. Watch it. Look at it. Look at it. Now notice it didn't terminate yet because I have an 18 second delay here. I will run T-Shark on the ESPC in a second. Let's just see what happens. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. There we go. It's time to terminate. Look at that. Look at that. So now let's go to a T-Shark command and let's see if we can see crap. We've got to wait here a couple seconds. There we go. Look. G711 PSMA. A-Law. G711 A-Law is being being pumped across. Let's see if we can catch some of these uh, DTMF digits in here. Uh, there's the DTMF. Ah, look at that. Where is it? There we go. Our RTP events. Awesome, huh? Fantastic. Exciting. Now, here I'm going to hit the uh, number two key, and now you can see what's happening here. No. Make sure the average call. I call the second, first, maybe one. You do the same thing here, hit the two key here, and you should get somewhat similar results. Hit the one key, put it back here, hit the one key, put it back here. Now, all these key strokes and strokes and keys and all the other great crap um, obviously are found in the SIPP website. You can, I don't know, here we go. This is what I was doing here too, display statistic menu, display scenario menu, whatever. Get it all, read it, live it, drink it, whatever. So now, what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to stop this scenario. I'm going to hit the magic Q, because it will drain the calls off. It's not going to force a kill everything. So now I'm just going to sit here and do that. Hit the magic Q button. Wait for it. Wait for it. Ah! Look at that. It's done. Now I can hit the Q button down here and it should automatically kill out. Now we should have no traffic on the ESPC. Scope that out. See, this crap actually works every once in a while. So now we're going to go back here. So there you have it. A very simple, easy to use call flow using SIP P to SIP P but in my case I have a device in the middle so there you go have a nice day